Welcome back to the BDGE Dynasty Fantasy Football Channel. I am Nicholas, and we've got Adam and Andrew beside me. And screw. Damn, girl. I didn't know you, I didn't know you got down <laughs> I know you had them notes. So today is going to be a little continuation of our video that we dropped Monday. We did a first-round rookie mock draft based on Chad Reuter of the NFL.com three-round mock draft, okay? We went through our top 12 picks in a rookie draft based on that. What we're going to do is parlay that, right? So we're going to look at a, a regular startup draft and say, hey, based on those landing spots in the NFL draft, based on the 12 picks we put together, let's project where those guys, based on real-life landing spots, are going to go in a startup draft. So we've got, like, we got a spider web right now of things happening on top of things on happening on top of things. And what we're going to be using is South Harmon, Adam's very own website. He right. has ADP pulled from 370, that's getting thick. That number getting, getting thick, thick. Man. Every day. Double-cheeked up number of drafts right now. Yo. <laughs> yeah, yo. <laughs> uh, real startup drafts. So we have yeah. ADP, and on this ADP, there is picks for where rookie picks are projected to go. So it's kind of actually a fun little exercise here um, because these drafts are based on, like, people taking those picks in their draft without having landing spots. Right. Now we're going to be able to hopefully – accurately project where they will go based on where they went in that draft. That was, I don't, that felt like the most confusing thing I've ever explained in my life. It wasn't that confusing. Okay. I guess it depends. You guys tell us, put in the comments if it was confusing as hell. You now, guys get it? We get it. Let Thank me, you. let me tell you something that's not confusing. Typically every year you'll look at these yellow placeholders. Uh, you're going to typically use kickers in your actual draft, right? You almost always see that kickers end up going behind where the players actually go. And oh, I think no. when you look at this mock draft, I think we'll probably end up destroying um, – some of these are going to be great, great values when you draft this this kicker, man. 100%. Because I'm already, this is where, like, tiers come into effect and where I'm looking at players like – I'm looking my lips at Malik Neighbors <laughs> at the 105. I mean, one of you guys uh, – Andrew, you took Malik Neighbors at the 6, and that would be all the way at the 406. I'm like, ain't no chance in fucking hell Malik is dropping all the way down there. Right. So, <clears throat> nah. got a little projection action going here. Okay. So, we have Caleb Williams – at the 101, you and I do, Andrew. And then you have Jaden Daniels. Regardless, it's the QB1 in this class, whoever it is. I will say, projecting-wise, if Caleb's the first one off the board, I think he has a little bit more name value and will go higher in Dynasty startup drafts. I would agree. Whereas, like, Jaden Daniels, Caleb, for me, if he goes 101 to Chicago, you know, and, and what happens based on that real draft that we just – or the mock draft from Chad that we just saw where they also trade yeah, up to Mar get Marvin Harrison. Yeah. I'm, I'm cool grabbing Caleb in the first round. 112, I'm, I'm chill with that. Jaden Daniels, how comfortable are you taking him in the first? So, like, when I look at uh, this mock draft, right, Jaden Daniels going at the 102 to the Washington Commanders, like, if you tell me he's got top three draft capital, there's not any difference for me really, realistically, as, as well as a rich. So, I, I would argue that Jaden Daniels for me at the 112, I'm still fine with. The big thing for me is I would say that regardless of how you shake out the top three, like, I think they're almost all going to be values, especially the 103 in this class, right? Like, if you tell me yeah. Caleb Williams, Marvin Harris, and Jaden Daniels, I think you just give me the third pick at the 212, and I'm ecstatic because of the drop there. Yeah. I mean, I look at it, too. I mean, even just looking at Nick, you and I, we have Caleb Williams as the first quarterback, but I have Jaden Daniels as my 102 in my personal mock draft that we put together. I think I'm still comfortable – whether it be Caleb Williams or Jaden Daniels, whether Caleb's a Chicago Bear, Jaden Daniels a Washington Commander, I think still above Jordan Love, who's being drafted at the 204 as the QB9, I'm still in whether it's Daniels or Williams. It doesn't really matter to me. I was about to say, That's, let's, yep, there let's you go. say, because we all have the first three players, it's the same. Caleb, Marvin Harrison, Jaden Daniels in some, you know, former fashion. I would say, predicting-wise, assuming this is how it plays out the draft, none of those three drop further than the 203 spot. That's yeah. what I would say. Agreed. I would agree. They all go ahead of Jordan Love. Now, he here's the question. Do they – I would say Caleb probably is most likely of the of the group to go ahead of Bijan and Amon Ra and yeah. probably even A. Rich. And then you could, you could make the debate, honestly. Uh, Jamar, CD, or if you think that highly of a guy like Caleb at quarterback. Let me ask you. I, I think you're probably more in tune with, like, the dynasty community right now than I am, and, and maybe you are as well. Do you – 
consensus, do you think Jaden Daniels will be going over Marv? I think I, I think I'm probably more chalky than you guys are in my in my mock. No, right I, I think you I think you very much are chalky. I, I think. Damn. I'm. I'm. <laughs> well, no, need for, no need for all that. <laughs> <laughs> but facts though. Um, no, I think J- I'm actually trying to say with Jaden Daniels in this draft, putting him at 101. I'm trying to kind of make it convicting that I think he's going to end up being. Um, maybe not the consensus overall 101, but I think there will be some people that consider drafting him at the 101, and some people actually will do it. I think you'll probably be looking at this way going like a third each way. I think you could realistically see a lot of 101s being Marv, being Caleb, but when you see Jaden Daniels continue like in the combine and with the rushing upside, I think it's going to make a conversation for him at the 101. Yeah, because I, I could also see it playing out where like Caleb goes at the 111, Marvin Harrison goes at the 112, and then Jaden goes – Somewhere between 201 to 203. Yeah. I agree with you. That's, I what, I, that's you. what I think will actually happen. Actually, I, I if, you're, if you're watching this video today, in my solo video yesterday, I did players to watch at the Combine and guys who have a lot to gain and lose. And Jaden Daniels is on that list. I think Jaden Daniels' hype could get pretty ridiculous uh, depending on what he puts together in Agreed. Uh, Indianapolis at the Combine. Like, I, and I think the hype train what for Jaden Daniels. What's like the most important thing for him? There, like, what are you looking for? Like, forty time? Are you looking for I mean, throws? Like, there's, there's the things that fantasy Twitter and and the community is going to get pretty excited about if he goes out there and he runs a really fast forty. Like, people are going to lose their mind. I mean, think of, think of the combine performance that Anthony Richardson put together last year, right? Like, he went out, he showed he had was a it good. Yeah, it was really good. I think it was Couldn't pretty good. Remember, yeah, he went out, ran a fast <laughs> forty. You know, was chucking the ball around the field. Like, I think that. If Jaden Daniels goes out there, shows off the arm, runs a fast 40, things like that, people are going to get pretty excited about him in fantasy football. And I think he could really start getting hyped up. I, I think that if you look at the landing spots here, Caleb going to the Bears with already DJ Moore and then they get Marv, he, he's going to go pat, He's going to go sooner than the 112. I can almost guarantee it. I, I'd probably put him at like the 109. Where did where did Bryce and Stroud go last year? Were they at the 2-3 turn? Startups. Um, Str- Stroud point. ended up being a lot further back. People were out on Stroud because uh, A. Rich ended up, you know, going up higher. So like Stroud was like the 105 in rookie drafts last so year. I mean, like startups. In startups, he was like sometimes third to fourth round. Jeez. Yeah, man. Yeah. C.J. Stroud was a huge value last year. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's. It's probably there's probably nobody you can compare to C.J. Stroud. Well, because here's the thing: all the stuff that. People were fading like uh, CJ for it. Like nobody somehow accounted that that Bryce could be in a situation that was similar. And we saw Bryce didn't really do a lot without having weapons. CJ just elevated all the fact that they didn't have any weapons. Although yeah. I would say, <coughs> as we've seen, when guys get hyped, there's also the counter hype of another player in a similar tier. I think that could happen with Drake May. I think Drake May, he's a guy that he's a lot of people. He's the one that seems like he's on the on the downswing a little yeah, bit. Yeah, right and now. a lot of people for, for many years actually had penciled him in as the QB2 in the class just like automatically. Yeah. Well, I actually, so he, this is actually a very interesting point to switch gears. Uh, I think we're all kind of in agreement just to, uh, before we do. We're, we're talking that these three guys are going to be going it, earlier than the 206, earlier than 204 probably, yeah. right? Yeah. I, I think that's about right. And I do think what will establish a 103 tier break, in my opinion, is that we probably will see Malik Neighbors in the back end of the second to early end of the third. Um, and the, the question I have for you guys now, and this is where like we talk about, are you going to take uh, Drake May or Malik Neighbors? I could see where a guy like Drake May doesn't necessarily – have a chance to get into the round two yet because he's going fourth, he's going to the Broncos. So I think, like, there's a chance that Neighbors gets drafted higher in startups than he does, um, like, in this Drake May conversation. I think that makes sense, too. Where, where I would project those two would be based on Drake May goes four to Denver in this mock. Malik Neighbors goes 12 to Arizona. Arizona. So great landing spot for Malik Neighbors. Decent landing spot for Drake May, but top five draft capital. I, I think – Right at that two three turn, somewhere from two eleven to three oh three. But I think Drake May probably is in that tier with like Dak Prescott right there. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah. I think from two eleven to three oh three is where both of those guys will fall. So we're looking at actually basically what we're talking about right now when you see when you look look at this relative to the kickers. Pick four, we're saying is gonna be about where pick three is right now. And pick five also is going to be getting very close and ahead of where pick four is right now. So we're yeah. talking about this is where I think you're gonna see the seismic bump ups in value. Well, yeah, I mean, it's just getting to the point where we're we're now the vagueness of the pick mm-hmm. isn't as enticing as the name and the landing spot. And so all of these guys are starting to creep up draft boards. And I think we're all in agreement with even down to guys in our top five with Malik Neighbors, Drake May, like all of those guys are probably creeping up to where these are right now. Because if you look at this draft board, that 312 being 
pick five, do you even think if we just called that Drake May at this point, do you think Drake May is going all the way in the back half or at the very last pick in the third round? I think he goes I, higher. I don't think Drake May will go behind a guy like Justin Fields or Tua right now. Just yeah. because people have their perception and their narratives negatively for those yeah. two guys. Where Drake May, not saying they don't have any type of downside, but Drake May is a lot more like wish casting upside. We haven't seen him fail per yeah, se. Right? Exactly. He's and gonna I, be in the first half of the third round, I think. Well, yeah, I was just gonna bring that up because I was gonna say I think there's an argument that people would prefer Drake May <coughs> over Brock Purdy over Dak Prescott, too, because we've kind of seen what they are. And even though they've been good fantasy football assets for us, I think you Th- what most people do is they project elite upside for every prospect, and so they're going to think, whoa, Drake May could give me QB1 numbers, whereas even though Dak Prescott and Brock Purdy have done that, it's not as sexy as what could be with Drake I th- May. I think you're kind of hoping Drake May becomes Justin Dak- Herbert. Well, I was going to say Dak Prescott, but yeah. you're getting him seven years younger. Right. Right, but I think a lot of people – want to project that like Justin Herbert type of ceiling for Drake May sure. which sure. is cuz you've heard that comparison thrown around a ton mm-hmm. already with Drake May and I think if people even just associate the name Justin Herbert being compared to Drake May they're going to rise him up draft boards pretty tremendously. Yeah. Well, I think that happens a lot in trades. Like that's why it's so hard to trade for a player because everybody trades a player at what their ceiling could possibly be. Sure. Whereas in a draft, like I actually think you get less of that because you have to choose a player or another player. Yeah. Because right. it's like you have to choose, like, okay, I could draft this guy at the ceiling, but then that means I'm letting this other guy go. So I think it actually evens it out a little bit more, which is why I feel like those values are so good. If you're able to make trades where you're getting the fifth pick of this draft all the way at the 312, you're winning that trade. Yeah. And then I think we all kind of have a tier, or I guess you're a little bit further behind on J.J. McCarthy, but you and I took J.J. McCarthy at the 106 in the rookie mock. He went 13th overall to the Raiders. We both, all three of us have Rome, who went. He went pick 14 to the Saints. 14 to the Saints. Brock Bowers went pick five to the Chargers, who you have up at 106. My thinking is, and you and I are probably aligned here, I would say that's a tier right there. Yeah. From six to eight. And then there's a Mm -hmm. massive fucking tier break, basically, with everybody else, where I think from McCarthy down to Brock Bowers will all get taken. Pretty much from the 312 to the 406. I would agree. Well, I was just going to say, and th- this kind of really uh, gives you a good visual for it. There's no chance in my estimation that Goff is going to be going ahead of a guy like McCarthy. Yeah. And, and, will, and that's where, to your point, you're saying like yeah. the 406. Goff's going at the 411 right now. I think that you're probably going to be looking at, at, at that point, does somebody want a quarterback or do they want a skill player? But you're not going to be seeing him go any later than quarterback 15, I think, for McCarthy. Yeah. And if you're telling me he's a top 15 in quarterback in Superflex right now or in the consideration value-wise, I'm taking that guy at the 106. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I will say since our last conversation, I, I do think McCarthy should be in that tier. I probably, if Atta I boy. redid it again, I would take I would switch him and Brian Thomas on my uh, board. Atta but boy. I do think you're right. I mean, you, you look at – J.J. McCarthy in a startup mock, and you're putting him, what is that? I mean, where I have him at in this mock draft, it would kind of be floating, where is that, around Bryce Young? What, the the 109? Yeah, it's between Bryce Young, Deshaun Watson. That's kind of where he is going to be drafted at. I mean, I think J.J. McCarthy probably just because of the unknown and kind of what we were talking about with Drake Mays, I think he's going to go above those guys. Yeah. Yeah, I almost think like the board, like Kyron Williams should probably be pushed back to where – H and DJ Moore are yep. move the wide receivers up and then put that tier like right just slot in those like first five picks there because mm-hmm. it's like Rome is so good but you're like ah situation's a little bit iffy in New Orleans so let's put them by proven studs McCarthy you know people can make their minds up about how they feel about him but then I think the interesting conversation becomes Brock Brock the, the reason I put yeah. him in the tier is because like I think people yeah. will draft and be like I can't take Brock over Trey McBride because of what Trey did right. but I don't want to take him that far behind well that, so that's I think what I was gonna say like four oh six. To me, to your point, it feels like he slides in almost at a floor, which is crazy to say, at tight end three in Dynasty. And then that makes the conversation <laughs> where it's like he's in the late fourth, mid fourth. And Would you take Brock or Trey? I would take Trey. Trey. Trey? Trey, yeah. I, I wouldn't have so, him so too much further behind Trey, though. Well, honestly. then let me rephrase the question for you then. If you would take Trey over Brock then, then that means your tier, starting from the 106, would actually start after Trey McBride, then, yeah, it would be after okay. Trey McBride. So where does where does where does he go for you then? Like where where does that tier for like Brock 
Rome, JJ McCarthy slide in on where the dynasty it? startup. Yeah. I think when I'm looking at it, honestly, where that four oh what is that, four oh eight where pick six is right there? Yeah, it's four oh eight. That's uh, I think that's pretty much where that tier starts for me. Okay. I don't, I honestly, you don't think it could if go I'm up looking higher? at it right now, like I think it could even go. Cause like I would probably take Brock Bowers and I'd probably take him over guys like Travis Etienne, who's at the four Oh five. So like, I'm really not that much further behind mm -hmm. where Trey McBride is right there at the four Oh four. It's crazy how spread apart these picks are like, there's no mm -hmm. tiers of the rookie picks yeah. whatsoever. Well, it, it, you know Just what? Spray it, and pray. Especially with the ADP. I think what happens is, like in the early parts, right? People you know, can confidently you know say, this "Old head's about to drop some fucking knowledge on us." <laughs> the, the, I'm dialed I what, in. I think what happens is <laughs> about to be a story as old as time. But like the top three picks, you can see they're all going in the first two rounds. Yeah. People right now are that don't. There's not a, fam a lot of familiarity with the 24 class, but they feel comfortable with guys like Caleb Williams, Marvin Harrison Jr., even a little bit of Jaden Daniels. They're not really that sold or don't know what to think about a JJ McCarthy. They don't know what to think about, you know. Like, how does Brock Bowers really fit into this mix? When you see what happens here and where they're going with draft capital, you can almost guarantee these wish casting, like, I don't know what this is. Basically, they, they feel like they're drafting a kicker. They feel like they're drafting a placeholder versus, yeah. well, I'm drafting, you know, a top 14 pick here in Roma Dunze going to the Saints. That's a totally different thing for a lot of people in Dynasty. How do you feel about this class just overall? I like it. I love it. I think yeah. it's the best one that we've seen in several years. I agree. Like, I, I – I'm, like, watching the tape of all these guys. I'm like, man, these are – there's so many good players in yeah. this fucking class. Man. I mean, we talked about it in the last group podcast that we did. Like, there was guys that I was able to leave off of my top 12 players, like Xavier Worthy, Troy Franklin. Like, those types of players didn't even make it into the first round. And I really like Troy Franklin. And yeah. he wasn't a first-round pick for me. So, like, that tells you how good the That's class what I'm is saying. and like, how I kept I kept, like, going deeper. I'm like, wide receiver seven, eight, nine. I'm like, dude. These guys, a lot of these guys would be, like, top five in a lot of other classes. Yeah. Deep. Well, and, and to the point you're making, I think as we keep going down this board, so typically if you think about, like, a generic first, a lot of times uh, with ADP, we'll, we'll say that roughly is, like, a seventh-round startup pick. And that, that basically means that yep. the late firsts are going to be going in that seventh round. I think this year, with as talented as the class is and where the draft capital looks to align, you could be seeing, like, second-round rookie pick early ones being like almost six seventh round startup picks. And I think as we keep going down, you're going to basically see this class get shoved up the board even more. Well, now I'm trying to figure it out too, because we're, we're at that breaking point where it's like, I think our top eight are like the big tier. Right? Yes. And then it's the combination of Brian Thomas who went 17 to Jacksonville in this mock draft. We have Keon Coleman who went 25. So first round cap to Kansas city. Bo Nix was the first pick of the second round to Minnesota. And then we have a, a mishmash of Jonathan Brooks, Troy, Flank, uh, Troy Franklin, Michael Penix, whatever, second round, second round players. Right. I'm asking myself, all right, Keon Coleman, first round pick. He's my 109. Brock Bowers already said, like, probably slots in at like the 406, 408 in there for me. Yeah. Keon, though, I'm, I'm dropping him down pretty significantly. Like, I'm not taking him, I'm not, I don't think I'm taking him above any of those late fifth round receivers. No. He, he, you know. well, Somebody might – people may get crazy because he's going to Kansas City in this mock, but I agree with you. I'm not putting him ahead of those guys in the fifth round. That's I, what I'm saying. Like, now now I'm like, this tier break is big enough for me that I might jump two full rounds. I was going to say – because you, you brought up that late fifth round. I was going to say, hell no. No, no, no. Like, like I'm not, not even, even close. Like, I'm not even there. I would probably take him over maybe some of the running backs just because I don't really value running backs. But then I look at the receivers. Like, I don't think I'm taking him over, like, Debo. I'm not taking him over Jaden Reed. I'm like, how much further do I go down there, you know? Like, uh, the, the, that's Probably. why I'm like the top part of this class is so strong. Yes. And then maybe it's a little bit of a drop off. Probably that 701 where George oh. Pickens is. I think that's the right spot ish. Yeah. I, I think I could see it. I will say I, I could definitely see Keon Coleman with the hype in Kansas City and Patrick Mahomes needing weapons, him going ahead of Jaden Reed. I, I could see that happening. There's going to be a big disconnect for me, I think, where I would take him in a rookie draft and where I would take him mm. in a startup. Like Keon Coleman, mm. like if this is how it played out and he was a first round pick to the Chiefs, I'd be fine with him at the 109. But, like, again, the tier but break you, is so large for me that I'm not, like, 109 hype is not going to get me to take him in the fifth round of a startup draft. So you yeah. think you'd be in a bunch – if you did a bunch of rookie drafts, you think you'd be likely to end up with a lot of Keon Coleman. However, in startups, you're probably unlikely to get him. I think yeah. that's probably a good call yeah. Yeah. for a guy like him with the Kansas City landing spot. It's probably going to get crazy. Yeah. yeah, I agree with that. And also, I will say, I'm probably – of the three of us, I'm probably the lowest on Keon Coleman. So, like – Yeah, why do you hate him? I don't – I mean, I don't hate him. I just don't necessarily <laughs> think his – Game is very good. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> say you fucking say it with just, your chest, man. Say, say I, that you've seen the interviews on TikTok. That's all you needed to say. What interviews? 
You never seen him on TikTok? <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, they're they're kind of funny. They're, they're okay. not. They're like people just ask him questions and he'll just like mumble something, and then every okay. comment is like, "This man don't even have a brain." It's okay. Kinda funny. Well, that probably. I mean, if he, I gave him an interview score, probably it probably did. would knock him down my board a little. Did you bit see more. that the, uh, you know, like the S two test that sent CJ Stroud yeah. like off the rails last year? Yeah. That, that agency, there was a report that just came out that was like, "We are uh, advising every one of our players that we represent not to take that test this year." So I think Dang. like all the agencies are going to follow suit. Oh. Damn. Love which it. is kind of fire. Yeah. yeah, I mean, but yeah, I just I I don't I tend to like from a rookie wide receiver perspective. I tend to like guys who are a little bit more refined route runners. Like that's just the kind of player that I prefer. I don't think Keon Coleman is that refined as a route runner. I think he has a pretty limited route tree, and so that's why I don't necessarily like him. Um, I think, yeah, I think at that this was FSU, point, dude. But I think I think the landing spot of Kansas City, like you said, is going to bump him up pretty significantly if that were the case. But, yeah, that's my Keon Coleman take. I don't need to dive too deep I into mean, Keon Coleman I until he, we get into He's not the most refined route runner. Um, I, get, I get why you say that. Yeah. I think that's – I think he actually is pretty polarizing. I think that I've seen people are pretty split I, on a guy I like I like Keon. guys like Troy Franklin. I like guys like Xavier Worthy more than I like Keon. I, I, I'm s- – I can't wait to get into more rookie talk. I'm Adonai so, Mitchell, those I'm guys. I like I'm so more. off on Worthy. Really? I'm really? so out on Worthy. I'm so out on uh, Malachi, Corley. Uh, Whoa. Yeah. Like I, I, like I got, I got takes on these guys for days. Yeah. I, I, I mean, Worthy's going to be interesting. All right. Yeah. Worthy, I, yeah, I thought Worthy yeah. was. But I really like Troy Franklin, like a lot. I liked him. A lot. Yeah. I'm, okay. not, I'm, not, I'm not on your level with Troy, but like yeah. he's not someone I'm fading. Yeah. We're, we're like, we're Worthy, I'm going out of my way to make sure I'm not taking him. Um, but then, okay, because when you get to like, all right, Bo Nix now. Right, like Bo Nix, I think with this landing spot, man, he could end up being like you see how big of a quarterback gap we have right now in startups from yeah, the yeah. four eleven to the six oh six. Yeah. Okay, so let's let's put this into practice. Bo Nix in Minnesota with almost first round draft capital, uh, or Jared Goff in Detroit. Goff, I'm taking Goff there. Okay. It's too much. It's too so safe for. But Goff, then the in next my one is Deshaun Watson. Bo Nix or Deshaun Watson? Watson. I'll take Watson still, but I bet you there's going to be some people that get crazy. So how – am I too high right there kind of putting him in that tier? Uh, you're getting to Bryce Young next at 608. Are you thinking Bo Nix over Bryce Young? I'm still not doing that either. So okay. For, me, so for so me, I think I'm starting to realize the more we do this, it's like those first eight – Are separating the, a lot more? Maybe the first five tier, the next three tier, based on these landing spots in the mock draft. <laughs> another tier between Keon Coleman and Brian Thomas. Another tier – Bo Nix, Brooks. Okay, so just just to conclude Fair. conclude that, like, you keep going down. Yeah. Are you going Bo Nix over Baker? I think that's where the conversation starts. Who's QB nineteen Agreed. at seven oh six? I think so that's where the conversation starts. And to I'm that point, he's Baker. probably a seventh round pick. I probably still would take Baker um, at this point, considering like if I'm looking at my picks ahead. If I haven't decided to punt. At this point, I'm taking Baker. So the next the next two quarterbacks would have been Kirk Cousins and Will Levis. Kirk, I feel like, is an unfair eval really right now because we have no yeah. real information on him. But Will Levis, I think, is a perfect fucking example. Yeah. Who was the early second-round pick last year. Similar, like, you know, similar mentality towards him where it's like, ah, we don't really know how we feel about I, him. But you probably I would feel take, a lot better about Knicks I would take in Knicks ahead of Minnesota over Will Levis in Tennessee. I would take him over Levis personally. Yeah. So I, th- okay. I think that's probably where it starts, too. So, so we're saying in this mock draft – Ground floor coming into the NFL, we're valuing Bo Nix as a top twenty quarterback in startups. Roughly, see, but that's what I'm saying now. Like to the point you made, where like we're talking about our one eleven now an eighth round pick. Yeah, you know it, what I mean. Yeah, so. and, and, and it, it could be that the those picks are still values, right? Where you're getting the second round, especially uh, still at values that aren't are not that crazy. So mm-hmm. right here, basically the one twelve ends up shaking out not much bump. If it's the nine oh three to an eight eighth round like there's maybe a, a round difference there but we didn't necessarily see that much as a, a we value got there eventually i just think the, the first like four or five rounds are really fucked the rookie picture well because right i think too to the point as we, as i'm kind of looking through this and imagine it in my head is as all these really high-end rookie picks start to push they're pushing value down the board right, right. so now all of a sudden guys like Jaden reed are almost you, you're forced to take them in the seventh round type thing because there is so much value falling down and that's going to end up making the the second round picks go down too. So yeah. So I mean, I, the way that I'm looking at it right now is it feels like with the top eight rookies in this class, we feel pretty good about those. But after that, like it starts to get where you prefer veterans and things like that over some of those guys. Yeah. And it's it's a pretty. I think at this point we're kind of viewing it as a pretty significant mm-hmm. teardrop. I I do. Yeah. I I see a very big teardrop. Yeah. I mean, because after after Keon like. I think the first 12, um, depending on 
how you feel about like Adonai Mitchell and stuff like that, you could make strong cases for first seven rounds. But then after that, like you, you definitely can see the case where like Blake Corum, you know, Jonathan Brooks, where am I really going to value guys like this at? I, I also, I see. also do want to say, because we are like, I'm probably pushing my own like player analysis hard on this, or if I was actually predicting it, I might take a few things back because I like, we were talking about where we would put the players, but if we're predicting it, the Keon Coleman's are going to go higher than significantly. Where we Brian Thomas, if he gets 17th overall draft cap, those guys are probably fifth round pick. Those guys are probably in the Zay Jones to uh, whatever Rashad yeah. White range. Keon, Keon Coleman, I, I think realistically could slot ahead of Jaden Reed with this type of draft capital and going to the Chiefs. Well, hear me in, out. In like, ADP. I, I get it feels blasphemous to take him over like JSN because JSN was like a god last year. What was he 20th pick, 21st pick? Yeah. Brian Thomas was literally picked higher. Than exactly. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Not the NFL wasn't as high on JSN as yeah. everybody who well that, that's true. What's interesting too is JSN was coming off the board, and this is going to speak to the strength of the wide receiver class that we have here in 2024. JSN was pretty much consensus wide receiver one in the class. Mm-hmm. Came off the board as pick I mean, 21. Yeah. So we have guys going uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. pick three to the Bears, Malik Neighbors pick 12 to the Cardinals, Romo Dunze pick 14 to the Saints. Like, lots of guys going before the number yeah. one wide receiver last year. And that's what I'm saying. So now I'm thinking about it. I'm like, it's not that crazy to start looking at where we had Brian Thomas in this draft, 17th overall, above uh, JSN. Because it's not like – like, Jordan Addison proved something to us last year. JSN didn't. Right. No, that's why I, I think Brian Thomas is going to slot in with the Addison-JSN yeah. range. Now, Keon Coleman, I think, will probably slot maybe slightly behind. But people – you, know, you don't necessarily know. The community might get crazy, and even though, you know, Andrew wants refined, refined route runners, like, people are going to see that Keon Coleman can sometimes go high point the ball. There's some exciting things yeah. about his game, and if you put him catcher. with Patrick Mahomes, man, dude, like... If dude, if you throw the highlight tape on for Keon Coleman, dude, it's he, electric. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's, a, he's a big athletic dude. I just, I mean, there's a catch that he made. I can't remember who he made it against, but he was, like, running across the middle of the field, caught it, like, one-handed. Oh, it was insane. And, dude, I that think was he like caught the, the minute, middle of the football. That was, like, like, the minute that he became, like, the wide receiver four or five in this class when he dude, did that. Dude, I yeah. saw that, and I was like, that's probably one of the best highlights I've ever yeah, seen. Put now, now, jersey swap him into a Chiefs jersey on that and think about where he's going. I know. That's what I'm saying. I, mm. I'm just saying, for me, I'm not doing it. <laughs> okay. All right. You, you see, you got Sky more. I, I wouldn't, maybe, I wouldn't either, but guys, I think he will go six rounds. Maybe sure. you guys, I mean, you guys are, like I said, you guys are a little bit higher on Keon than I am. Maybe you guys can show me something on tape that I haven't seen yet. But I, I think, though, to the point, the first round, so you'll have, like, Bo Nix will still probably go in this six range. So I think you'll still get a lot of value overall all, all through the first round. But the second round now, I think in this Armok, where we would start having the second round, they may fall more in line with what you see in typical classes. Yep, yeah. I agree. All right, there you have it. We have videos coming out five days a week. What What do you got on tap uh, tomorrow for them? Tomorrow, I don't even know what I got on tap for tomorrow. I haven't even thought that out. Uh, I don't. I don't have a Friday video set yet. Okay, so maybe we won't have anything live for you tomorrow. We might. We might be screwed. Sorry, guys. Well, we'll have it live for you tomorrow. It'll be Man's fire Adam too. It'll be in your face, whole <laughs> yelling at you. If you enjoyed the video today, make sure you subscribe to the channel, especially if you're new here. It's the only way you can subscribe. Hit the button that looks like this. Subscribe to their channels. Yes, sir. And we will be bike five days a week, Monday through Friday. Yell in the comments, too. Yeah. Peace.